Good morning, I'm uh, Dilip Thakur, Publisher Editor of Education World. Good morning, I'm Sumia Yasmin, Managing Editor. This month, month of June, we have a very interesting cover story. In fact, uh, an unprecedented cover story uh, on the great educator, philosopher, philosopher seer, sage, J. Krishnamurti. Uh, as most people would probably know, Krishnamurti promoted the Krishnamurti Foundation in uh, mm -hmm. Chennai and several schools, about six Krishnamurti schools, including Rishi Valley, Sayadri School, uh, Pune, uh, KFI Chennai, Patshala Chennai, and also the Rajgan Besant, Rajgat Besant, Besant, Besant uh, School in Varanasi. Yes. We'll tell our readers more about our cover story, but uh, first, uh, should we tell our readers what we've got in store for them this month? This month better? Yes. Uh, starting with our editorial section again two very incisive editorials one on the inherent contradictions on the national education policy 2020 how it uh, promises a tight but light regulation but you know prescribes a whole alphabet alphabet soup of uh, you know regulatory bodies agencies yes, yes. so we've uh, written a very on the other hand on the other hand it says that uh, it wants all colleges and universities to become autonomous degree awarding institutions. So therefore, uh, we, we discern a uh, uh, contradiction and that's our first editorial. Yes. The second one is also uh, on an important subject is that uh, the judiciary, uh, in our opinion, uh, is uh, being too soft on the government, uh, especially in matters relating to communal uh, discord and harmony, hate speeches, communal violence. So our advice to the judiciary uh, is that perhaps they should take a, a sterner, stiffer stand yes. and not pander. Absolutely, our judiciary. advice to the judiciary government, you know, anyone who, who will listen is that 21st century India, which wants to be a knowledge superpower, does not need medieval Mandir Masjid disputes. Exactly. And uh, in our education, a news section, again, a cross-section of news from our different states. Uh, from Delhi, we've uh, got a very important uh, and I think promising uh, uh, news uh, report on the UGC uh, issuing guidelines for foreign uh, training and joint degree programs uh, with Indian universities. It's a promising uh, initiative. Yes, I mean, that has been applicable, uh, practiced only by private universities, mm -hmm. but now uh, UGC has allowed even public universities to uh, link up with uh, foreign universities. Yes, and Maharashtra, we've reported a standoff between the uh, Shiv Sena Congress and the coalition government and the governor, uh, Mr. Koshari over the appointment of Vice Chancellor to the Savitri by a Pule University. And uh, universities, in general, yes, yes, universities yes. in general. Yes, universities in general. So there's a big you know, standoff happening uh, between the governor and the government. Mm. Which, uh, the standoff which is you know, impacting uh, universities and education institutions so with just the academic year having been started. I mean, nobody needs uh, this kind of uh, you know, standoff. Yes, because uh, Ex officio, the governor is the chancellor, chancellor. of all universities, yes. public universities yes. in every state. Yes. So we, so there also, you know, plenty of news plus, uh, you know, solutions uh, to that problem. In Karnataka, we have reported on the textbooks controversy and allegations, which is a big, very yes. big issue very in this big state. Issue. In fact, the textbooks uh, committee has been uh, dissolved and uh, the allegations of saturnization of texts against the BJP government calls for them to be revoked, uh, etc. So we reported on that controversy. Uh, uh, West Bengal, uh, again, uh, never-ending TET scam, uh, the numerous uh, writ petitions that have been filed in the Calcutta High Court. TET being the teacher eligibility test. Yes. Uh, and finally, the Calcutta High Court has ordered a CBI inquiry, which we hope after years of uh, you know, in the courts, the matter will be finally resolved. Yes. Yeah. There's also an education news this time from Odisha. Again, a confrontation between, uh, you know, the, the, governor. U, the governor, the UGC and the Odisha Public Services Commission. So we uh, recommend that you, you know, read our education news. Of course, education notes uh, brings uh, to you 
also uh, news snippets from various states including Andhra Pradesh, Jammu and Kashmir, Punjab, Assam, etc. And uh, expert comment, uh, Dilip, this time written by yes. Captain Madrovsky on a very interesting subject. Captain Madrovsky is the head of the School of Liberal Arts uh, and Humanities at the OP Jindal University. A highly qualified, uh, very experienced person who's, who welcomes uh, recognition, the recognition given to liberal arts and humanities education by the new education policy 2020. Yes. Uh, which uh, she believes that, and we also believe, is very important in as much as it makes it compulsory for all students in higher education to have some basic understanding of history, humanities. Law, etc. Yes, a very well written, uh, insightful column. I advise you read it. And uh, institution profile this time we've got an institution profile uh, on Army Public School, Army Barak School yes. Barakpur, which is just about an hour's drive from Calcutta and the University of Melbourne, Australia. The important thing to understand there are 200, uh, uh, no, the 249 Army pre primaries. And 137 uh, yes. primary secondary schools run by the Indian Army across the country yes, for indeed. its officers. Yes. The second profile is on the University of Melbourne, Australia, which has nurtured four Australian Prime Ministers, five Governors General, and eight Nobel laureates. Yes, indeed. And the yeah, Achiever section again, two very bright, uh, promising. Uh, Achievers, one is a Golfer. Uh, golfing champion and hopefully, a, you know, win an Olympic medal for India, and another one is a social justice uh, warrior, Anushka Jolly. Yes. Now, uh, to our unprecedented cover story, yes. Dilla. Yes. 11th May was the uh, 127th birth anniversary of uh, J. Krishnamurti. Uh, one of Jake, uh, and uh, it was not celebrated at all as per her wishes. Nevertheless, we thought it's an occasion on which we should revisit his teachings, particularly in this time, in this uh, era of religious, fractious, religious, and communal discord. And while the country is also suffering the ravages of climate change, mm -hmm. Krishnamurti was a man far ahead of his time. And uh, he, though he didn't profess any mm. creed or practice any religion or preach any uh, religion or creed, he nevertheless had a philosophy of uh, promoting self-reflection, leisurely st uh, study uh, uh, for school children and uh, living in harmony with nature. nature. Self-reflection. Knowing yourself. Yes, more wonderful attributes. Stress free education, yes. learning in a joyous uh, environment where there's no competition, where there's no, you know, uh, this mad uh, rat race for scoring high marks in exams, etc. Yes, so we believe that the time when the national education policy is being uh, rolled out, it's in implementation stages, it will be very important for all educators, including people in government and uh, people, all school principals, teachers, to read this cover story, which yes. has an idea of what Krishnamurti stood for and why it's so relevant in this uh, disturbed uh, current times that we are experiencing yes, in and, India. And we've also highlighted, Adela, though these uh, schools are very small in number and taken, you know, selected number of students. All of them are very highly ranked in the Education World India School Rankings, uh, which is a testimony to the fact that, you know, yes, you can offer non-stress, uh, stress-free education, in harmony with nature, have small class sizes, yet be, you know, academic, uh, hubs of ac academic excellence. Yes, in indeed. fact, Rishi Valley School has been ranked India's number one co-ed boarding school for the last 15, 15 years. years. Exactly, yes. Yeah. And it's also important to note that Krishnamurti's message is alive not only in India, mm. but also in uh, uh, foreign countries like the Brockwood School in UK and there's a school in uh, uh, California, USA, which practice uh, and teach the Krishnamurti way. Yes. So we recommend that all uh, educators, we strongly recommend in our very title of our story, yes. why? That why every educator should revisit 
J. Krishnamurti. So it's an unprecedented story. We recommend that you read it. And I'm yes. sure some enlightened, everyone will gain some enlightenment from it. Absolutely. There's no doubt that there are numerous uh, best practices and pedagogies which can be uh, incorporated, incorporated by all schools. By all schools uh, to make education a joyful and a stress-free experience for children, which Absolutely. is very uh, needed. Absolutely. And uh, moving forward, our teacher to teacher column this time is written by a educationist, Lawrence Frey, who's talking about how uh, school management and teachers and principals should take the lead in safeguarding students against harmful technology. Mm. And Lawrence though, he has a foreign name, he's a very experienced uh, Indian educator. Yes, yes, yes. And international news of course, starting from Russia where there's a student protest crackdown, students who are protesting the Ukraine, Ukraine war, war are being targeted. Uh, there's a news report on a cheating epidemic which is happening during online exams. Around the world. Around the there's world. A cheating epidemic in uh, online exams. And yes, there's also a thing on Afghanistan where you're talking about, you know, how uh, the Taliban is uh, clamping down on, yes, on uh, women's, women's education, education, especially at the university level. There's also, this time we've included a story on uh, India as seen from abroad and why Indian uh, universities, including the IITs, uh, can't attract foreign students, which is a very important metric for measuring uh, in the world university rankings, for measuring, uh, for ranking universities. Absolutely. And uh, there's a pictorial essay on a very successful education world higher education rankings, a 22-23 awards, which were held on May 28th in New Delhi, in Dhaka. And we had over uh, 250 educators, top, uh, top higher education, higher education leaders, leaders, vice chancellors, faculty, deans, uh, and promoters attending this event, which featured two very interesting panel discussions. Uh, one was on uh, NEP uh, 2020 flexibility provisions, uh, will they dilute quality in higher education? And another one also was on NEP 2020 implementation of roadblocks. Yes, it was a very successful conference and there's a, a string, a whole, a whole array of photographs yes. of people awarded, uh, including two extraordinary achievement in education leadership awards. And um, then the, we also had our grand jury awards, yes. which are for lesser known universities, low profile universities, who in the opinion of the jury are doing a good job in, uh, in a very uh, low profile way in uh, deep corners of the country. Yes. It's in the education world, uh, it's always our uh, motive and uh, objective to encourage educators to learn from each other and to learn best practices from the best universities. That's why we have our rankings and to cre create a, a cooperative environment in all uh, in preschool to higher education yes. and that's why we have taken a, a lot of pains to put together the, uh, these pictorial essays with a lot of commentary uh, in between so mm -hmm. we recommend that to you and uh, last we have a very interesting book review on uh, a book which is surprisingly got very little coverage in the Indian media it's, it's about the opium trade how it was forced uh, opium trade from opium grown in India, India, which was forced on China by the British. And according to the author, Thomas Manuel, in this really brilliant uh, historical uh, narrative uh, titled How a Global Drug Trade finan Financed or Funded the British Empire. It's a very important book for history lovers and uh, we strongly recommend it. Yes, and there's also another book, book review on the three Khans. And it traces the you know careers of Bollywood Sri Khans, um, Amir Khan, Salman Khan, and Shah Rukh Khan, and you know their impact on, on Indian society, sociology and society. society. It's, a, it's a very interesting uh, review, and of course our last page postscript, in which we uh, want in we describe Karnataka as a broken window state. So what are broken windows? You'll have to read that. Yes. And then the connection between sports and socialism. And then uh, there's a criticism of uh, public sector enterprises, as usual. Uh, I, I was a former editor of Business India and Business World, so don't be surprised. Where, I, uh, where we write that 
the public sector enterprises are being uh, privatized too slowly and are dragging back the Indian economy. So, there's a lot in this uh, historic, in our opinion, uh, cover story uh, on Krishnamurti and all the rest that we told you. And we strongly recommend that you read it. I believe uh, you will be richer for it. Yes, you'll be enlightened, richer for it. And we also encourage you to start a debate. Uh, write to us, we welcome feedback, uh, criticisms, uh, positive uh, you know, endorsements. Uh, negative quite, also. Negative but, uh, also, like I said, criticisms as well as positive endorsements, all are welcome. And before we uh, let you go, a quick uh, preview uh, also of our parents' world cover story, where this time we've done a very interesting cover story on seven child health myths and truths. As we know, the internet and the ubiquitous uh, social media is flooded with, you know, a lot of child nurturance uh, advice, yes. especially in the matters of uh, health and uh, medical advice. So here, what we've done and is some of it is dangerous. Yes, some okay. of it is very dangerous, contradictory, and misleading. Misleading. It's confusing and stressing out young parents. So what we've done is, in this issue, we've spoken to very uh, highly qualified uh, pediatricians and medical experts and asked them to put forth seven child health truths which every parent should know. Thank you. Yes, thank you very much.